CES 2023, and guess who showed up? Lightyear. I know a thing or two about solar cars. That's me, long, long time ago. I helped build this, so you would expect me to gush all over the Lightyear Zero, the first production SEV, solar electric vehicle. But as people get older, sometimes their opinions change. Before going deep into the car, let me summarize how Lightyear got started. It started with solar team Eindhoven. Eindhoven is a city in the Netherlands that is a technology hub. Students from the Eindhoven University of Technology got together to build Stella and compete in the World Solar Challenge in 2013. These bros you see here are now the CFO, CTO, and CEO of Lightyear. Cool, huh? The Bridgestone World Solar Challenge is that solar car race from Darwin to Adelaide, Australia. GM won it way back in 1987 with the Sun Racer, which was developed by them, Hughes Aircraft, and aerospace innovator Air Environment. Going up against mostly university students, it was like David versus Goliath, except Goliath won this time. Back to Stella. It won the Cruiser class in 2013, which requires a vehicle to be capable of carrying a driver plus at least one passenger. Basically, they're trying to take the first steps towards a practical family car, not a race car. They finished the race with an average speed of over 41 miles per hour and a peak top speed of 74 miles per hour. The 2013 team handed off responsibility to the next class who continued to advance the program, building a whole family of solar-powered vehicles. The founders of Lightyear moved on but never lost that vision for a practical solar-powered electric vehicle. In 2016, they founded Lightyear and secured a first round of funding in 2019. Shortly thereafter, they revealed the Lightyear 1. Renamed the Lightyear Zero, it began production in late 2022 in Finland by the contract manufacturer Valmet Automotive. How does it stack up to the competition? We first need to figure out who is its competition. Lightyear Zero is not about hyper-performance, it's about hyper-efficiency. I'm going to compare it to the Tesla Model S dual motor, Mercedes-Benz EQS 450 Plus, and the Lucid Air Dream Edition, all premium four-door electric vehicles that seat five people. The Lightyear is unlike almost all other EVs in that it uses hub motors. There is an electric motor located in each wheel to provide all-wheel drive. The Lordstown Endurance and Aptera also will use hub motors. The advantages of a hub motor is simplicity and efficiency. There are no drive shafts or a gear reduction. The main disadvantage is unsprung weight. The mass of each wheel and brake assembly has a direct impact on ride and handling of the vehicle. Adding mass to each wheel is not a good thing. Lightyear is not about hyper performance or even high performance. It has about half the power of the Mercedes and nowhere near the others. Mercedes, Tesla, and Lucid all offer even more powerful versions of the ones that I specified here. That translates into a leisurely 0 to 62 in 10 seconds, about as fast as the current Toyota Prius. Tesla and Lucid are stupid fast. Range for all these sedans are very good. European market puts less emphasis on range because they drive fewer miles than Americans and have more options for the occasional holiday road trip. Here's where things get interesting. Lightyear goes that far using a much smaller battery than the others. How can it do this? It's super lightweight. Having a smaller battery helps, but it's more than that. Engineers scrutinized every part to keep the mass to a minimum. It's also super aerodynamic. All these cars boast impressive coefficient, but Lightyear outdoes them all. You'll notice that it does not have side mirrors with reflective glass. Traditional side mirrors have a big impact on drag coefficient. Europe now allows cameras to replace side mirrors. In the US, they are still not allowed, although there is some movement in DC to change that in the upcoming years. The lightweight, slippery shape, efficient hub motors, and other stuff result in an efficiency rating far better than the others. Now let's talk about solar. I've compared Lightyear Zero to other electric cars, but it's a solar electric car. To be clear, the Lightyear has a charging port to use electricity from the grid, just like the others. The vehicle incorporates 782 monocrystalline silicon solar cells into the hood and roof. This results in five square meters of solar collection. Picture a five foot by 11 foot panel. What does that get you? Lightyear claims up to 43 miles of driving range from the sun per day. Like all other claims, there are a lot of assumptions in that number. You need to park in the sun, not in a garage or under a tree. 
Different cities experience different amount of sunshine per year and during the year. So living in Los Angeles, you will generate close to twice as much electricity as living in Berlin for a year. Stated as a range, Lightyear says owners can expect 3,700 to 6,800 miles of driving from the sun. Depending on how much you drive, you may not have to plug in much at all. Sounds great. Sign me up. How much? Whoa! Yeah. Let's rationalize this. Electricity is very expensive in Europe right now due to restrictions on Russian natural gas. You'll save a few hundred dollars each year on electricity with this car versus a plug-in. Hard to justify the extra cost, though. You could also decide to buy one of the less expensive Tesla or Mercedes models and use the extra money to install a home solar system with battery energy storage. Not everyone in Europe has living situation that would allow for this, though. My initial debate about this car was whether one should put solar on their home or solar on their car. And the correct answer is both. Solar on your home is becoming a no-brainer. On cars, you'll see more established companies offer solar cells on horizontal surfaces. They need to keep the design simple to minimize costs, and the added benefit will be modest. You'll still have to plug in. Before you jump to the conclusion that solar cells are wicked expensive, they're not. Prices keep dropping. The material cost of the solar cells is probably less than what they save by putting a smaller battery in it. In my estimation, the price of the Lightyear Zero is so high because they are operating on a knife's edge. They're a startup with low volume and high production costs. The vehicle undoubtedly has unique design elements, including encapsulating the solar cells and the electronics behind them. What they need to do is generate cash and survive long enough to make Lightyear 2. And at CES 2023, they provided a glimpse of this future vehicle cleverly concealed behind natural wood slats so as not to divulge too much. It's a four-door sedan with a fastback shape like the Lightyear Zero. Seems a bit shorter in length, but a slightly taller stance. Traditional mirrors on the side and, of course, solar cells front to back. Range is said to be 500 miles with a combination of plugging in and soaking up the sun. That figure assumes Chicago weather conditions, so living in a place where it's always sunny will do better. A production location has not been finalized, but the starting price? Under $40,000. Hell yeah. I almost think that's too cheap. I forgot to say this earlier, but Lightyear in person has a very special presence. It looks really good. I know those other EVs I compared it to, they're amazing. But this vehicle will get you noticed in a good way. And the Lightyear 2, from what they showed, looks very special too. If you're interested, you can join a waitlist on their website. It's not a pre-order, just showing interest. There you have it, Lightyear. Interesting backstory, impressive product, and if they can keep selling Lightyear Zeros long enough to get the affordable Lightyear 2 out, then their future will be bright. Ha <laughs> ha! Thanks for watching. Best wishes, Mike.